In this video, I'll be discussing the Fourier series. The Fourier series of a function is a linear combination of sinusoid functions. Take a look at the Fourier series representation of f of x. We see that our Fourier series has a constant term a sub 0, as well as two coefficients, a sub n and b sub n, which both depend on the integer n. In this video, I'm going to go over how to find these terms. Now suppose we want to find the constant term a sub 0. How would we go about this? It might seem like an odd thing to do, but the first step I'm going to take is to integrate both sides of the equation from negative l to l. We can split up the right hand side of the equation into three different integrals, all going from negative l to l. Let's first tackle the integrals with the sinusoids. Notice here that we can switch the order of integration and summation, and take out the constant terms a sub n and b sub n. Remember that these constant terms depend on n, so they should still remain within the sum. Now let's look at the cosine integral first. Using u substitution, we can very quickly see that the integral is equal to 0 for every value of n. Remember that n is an integer, so sine of n pi is always 0. This means that when we integrate f of x from negative l to l, the cosine sum vanishes. Let's now look at the sine integral. We don't even need to try evaluating this integral analytically to see what it equals. Remember that sine of some constant times x is an odd function. So if we integrate from negative l to l, we'll just get 0. Looking back at our whole initial equation, we see that the sine sum vanishes as this integral is simply equal to 0 just like that of the cosine integral. We can now eliminate the sine term from the equation as well. This leaves us with the following. The integral of f of x with respect to x from negative l to l is equal to the integral from negative l to l of the constant term of our Fourier series with respect to x. Simply evaluating the integral and solving for a sub 0, we find that the constant term in the Fourier series is equal to 1 over 2l times the integral of f of x dx from negative l to l. Now let's look back at the whole equation from earlier. Is there any way we can manipulate this equation so that we have a chance of finding b sub n and a sub n in terms of n? Let's now just focus on b sub n, the coefficient for the sine terms. The trick here is in fact to multiply the integrand at the left hand side by the function sine of pi m x over l. It's important that this multiplication happens inside the integrand. Notice that this means we have to distribute this function, sine of pi m x over l, to each of the functions in the integrals on the right hand side of the equation as well. This may seem like an unmotivated move at the moment, but it will be clear why we're doing this in a minute. We want to restrict this number m to being a positive integer. Now it looks like we've just made things worse, but let's just see what happens. First, look at the integral containing the constant term a sub 0. Using our knowledge from before, we can immediately recognize that this integral must be 0. We're really integrating sine of some constant times x from negative l to l, so this whole integral is equal to 0. Now take a look at the integral containing cosine. Using knowledge that sine is an odd function, cosine is an even function, and that the product of an odd and an even function is an odd function, we can quickly see that this integral is also equal to 0, since the bounds are negative l to l. This leaves us with one more integral on the right hand side of the equation. Let's use u substitution to make things simpler. Notice that our integrand is vulnerable to a trigonometric identity, in particular this one. The product of sine of a and sine of b is equal to cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b all times one half. Substituting this expression in our integrand, we end up with this. Remember that we're working under the idea that m is a positive integer. n is obviously a positive integer as well. Therefore, the sum and difference of n and m must also be integers. 
So now this means there are two cases to consider. We have to consider when m and n are equal and when they are not. Remember that all of this integration is happening within an infinite sum. Let's assume that m equals n. In that case, our integrand reduces to this, 1 minus cosine of 2n times u. If we evaluate this integral, we find that it's equal to b sub n times half the period of our function, which is just l. If we then solve for b sub n, we get the following formula b sub n is equal to 1 over l times the integral of f of x times sine of pi n x over l dx. So what about when m does not equal n? There's obviously only one term for which m and n can be equal. So when they aren't equal, we can evaluate this general integral, and it's going to account for every term for which m and n are not equal. That accounts for every other term in the infinite sum. Now, if you evaluate this integral, you'll find that it equals 0. Now I'm not evaluating this one in the video, but it's not hard to find that it vanishes when m does not equal n. This means that no matter what positive integer value of n we choose, b sub n will always be equal to the formula we found, because all other terms in the sum will vanish when integrated. So now we found a formula for the constant term a sub 0 and the sine coefficient b sub n of our Fourier series. What about the cosine coefficient a sub n? Fortunately, the way to find a sub n is basically exactly what we just did to find b sub n, except instead of multiplying the integrand by sine of x, we multiply by cosine of x. Using these formulas, we can find the Fourier series of a function with an arbitrary period of 2L. If you're interested, I encourage you to try finding the Fourier series of a simple polynomial using these formulas. Moving on, I want to discuss a more compact way to write the Fourier series. Recall first Euler's formula e to the ix equals cosine of x plus i sine of x. Using only this formula, we can find an expression for cosine and sine of x purely in terms of the complex exponential function. We can then substitute these expressions into the initial formula for the Fourier series. Grouping like terms together, we end up with this expression. What you might notice is that these two terms are complex conjugates of each other and these two terms are also complex conjugates of each other. The result is that the sum of these two values is completely real, even though it looks like it could be complex. This is reassuring because it means we didn't mess up our arithmetic. The functions we started with were completely real, so our result should remain so. In any case, notice that for every term corresponding to the exponential term on the right, we add a term which has a factor of the exponential term on the left. The fact that this exponential term on the right carries this additional negative term here allows us to change the bounds of the sum from minus infinity to infinity and combine the exponential functions into one. This exponential function then carries a coefficient c sub n and we can change a sub zero to c sub zero. Make sure to verify for yourself that this makes sense. We now have a doubly infinite sum and only one coefficient. This is the complex Fourier series. Remember that this is a doubly infinite sum, going from minus infinity to positive infinity, and c sub n is the complex conjugate of c sub minus n. Again, the sum is real when we add these conjugates. There is in fact an integral formula for this c sub n. Notice that c sub n equals a sub n minus i b sub n over 2. We already have formulas for a sub n and b sub n, so we can plug those into the equation for c sub n. Notice now that we can combine the integrals, and this should look familiar. Cosine of pi nx over l minus i sine of pi nx over l is equal to e to the power of minus i pi nx over l. Now, since c sub minus n is just the complex conjugate of c sub n, the exponent in the integrand could be positive or negative. The sine only determines which way we're integrating around the complex unit circle, so the sine in the exponent is just convention.